All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going over the prelims on UFC 269. First, let's say thank you to our sponsor, Tampa Bless, home team do good, tampabless.com for more information on that. Also, once again, I got the giveaway. I'll show you guys again. I got the Dustin Poirier autograph card in honor of Ooh. Poirier main event. Absolutely free. You just got to like, subscribe, and comment on the video and our first video that I already posted the first giveaway and then you'll be entered to win the Poirier card I'll be announcing it on one of my future videos very soon I'll include shipping worldwide and I'll probably be throwing in a few other goodies with that as well also please yeah. share the video if you got some time share some TCG and whiskey videos all right enough about that let's get right into the fights this, yeah man this main prelim card is awesome here we got Josh Emmett Ranked number seven, minus 160 favorite. He's 36 years old. He's 16 and two, and he's on a three-fight winning streak. And he's going up against Dan, 50K, Ige, ranked nine, plus 140. He's 30 years old. He's 15 and four, and he's coming off the loss to the Korean Zombie. Tom, we know Josh Emmett had the surgery. That's why he was out for a little while. Does he make this big comeback, or does Ige shut him down? Woo! This is a good one, man. Josh, it's been a minute, Emmett. <laughs> 36, the American on one side, 5'5 five, five in height. Dan Ige, the American on the other, 5'6 in height. Dan Ige holds a one-inch reach advantage. Josh Emmett, he's coming off a decision win over Shane Burgos in June 2020 and three wins in a row. You can do the math on that. That's about a year and a half layoff. Okay, he had the surgery, but what has he done How's his recovery gone? How's the training been going? Those are big question marks here. Josh is a purple belt in BJJ, and he's got that NAIA wrestling background as well. Dan, uh, Josh, 16-2 and two. overall, 7-2 and two in the UFC. Ige on the other side, 15-4 and four overall, 7-3 and three in the UFC. He's a black belt in BJJ, brown belt in judo, and he's got the NCAA D2 wrestling background. He's coming off that unanimous decision loss to the Korean Zombie in June 2021. Like I mentioned here, I think a lot depends on how Ige, not Ige, how Josh Emmett recovered here in this year and a half off and what he's done with that time, you know, as far as his recovery and just even just advancing from where he was prior to the surgery. I think it's going to be a close Fight. I mean, I, I could see it going a close decision either way. Wouldn't surprise me. But I'm going to put my eggs in the Josh Emmett basket. Right. Josh Emmett right. by decision. Right here. This fight could be a main event on any US mm. ESPN fight night card. This is an awesome fight. I really miss Josh Emmett. I thought he was going to break through and get that title shot a lot sooner. And then that injury struck him. It was brutal. You could, And he fought through it. Um. I really don't have a great read on this fight. I've watched some tape on these guys. I've seen these guys fight. Emmett blew out his knee. How's his rehab go? He's 36, closer to 37 now. He's got mm. great power. He comes from a good team. Overall, like I said, I thought he was going to challenge for the belt. Now he's racing the clock. You, you can't go forever at certain weight classes. It gets harder and harder when these guys are so fast. Ige doesn't have the same power. I don't feel that Emmett has, but I think he's got all the skill set. As you mentioned, his credentials are just crazy. He's got wrestling. Yeah. He's got judo, black belt in this. He's got great stand-up. And I'm going to tell you right now, both guys got cardio. Ige has insane cardio. The dude does not tire. Mm. The dude has a great chin on him, too. Great jujitsu. He's very durable. Both guys are stud. I'm going to say I think Ige gets the upset right here. Mm, I just think I like he wears it. down Josh because he hasn't been in the cage in a while. And I think if he can avoid the big shot, because Emmett definitely has power, I think Dan is almost always the underdog, and he upsets a lot of people. He never gets that credit for whatever is he? Reason. What's the line on this one? Do you have that? Minus 160 Josh Emmett, plus 140 Dan Ige. Oh, it's close then. Okay, right real close. It's close, but that's a, that's a good edge for Emmett. And yeah. So I'm taking but it's only it's only Wednesday that could change. Oh yeah, it could definitely change. I'm I, I got him in a decision. I think like you said, Emmett's tough. He doesn't go anywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if Emmett gets the win here though. I just ha we haven't seen him. 
And without seeing him with that knee surgery, some surgeries are really tough on guys, especially at a certain age. So, but let's get right into the card game. Emmett has some beautiful 2018 cards. I got to sell on him. Strictly the race against the clock. I'm not sure if he's going to have enough time to break into that top five now and move up the rankings. I mean, we know right now the featherweight division's got a lot of guys waiting for that belt shot with Max Holloway fighting. Up. Oh, she deserves a shot and stuff like that. It's crazy. Ige, recently printed. I'm a fan. He's grown on me a lot. He just keeps piling in wins. I got a buy rating on him. I think we haven't seen his, his best days yet. I think he's got to beat a few top-tier talents in a row, but I think he can do that. He moved his camp to Vegas, and he's looked better and better. All right, let's move it right on. Bantamweight bout Pedro Munoz. Ranked number eight, he's a minus 110, even right now. Age 35, he's 19-6 and six with one no contest, and he's dropped three of his last four with his last being a loss to the King of Rio. No shame in that. We saw how good Aldo really is in his last fight there. He's going up against Dominic Cruz, ranked number 10. Same thing, minus 110. He's 23-3. and three. He's 36 years old. Not a lot of fights recently, though, so he doesn't have a lot of damage on him. And his last win was over Casey Kenny. Tom, another mm. one. What do you see going on yeah. here? This could be a headliner for another fight night card. <clears throat> now, I mean, the prelims, the, the main prelims on this UFC 269 card are competitive with the main for sure. Definitely. All four of these fights that they have listed right here are all solid fights. So we got Pedro Munoz, the Brazilian on one side, 35, 5'5 five, five in height. The American Dominic Cruz on the other side, 36, 5'7 in height. Cruz holds a three inch reach advantage. Pedro Munoz, 19 and 6, with one no contest overall. UFC, 9 and 6, with one no contest. The one no contest was a win, but he popped for elevated levels of testosterone. Mm. He's a black belt in BJJ, brown belt in judo. He's coming off the unanimous decision loss to Jose Aldo in August 2021. On the other side, you got Dominic Cruz, 23-3, and three, UFC 6-2. and two. Feels like he's had more fights, but I think if you're a longtime MMA fan, you were kind of used to watching him as well in the WEC. All right. So, you know, that crossover was really like a farm team for the UFC, so it felt kind of UFC-ish. He's coming off a split decision win over Casey Kenny in March 2021. He's a blue belt in BJJ. Um, Munoz fights. All his losses, tough opponents. It's not like he loses to just some random cans. Everybody that he loses to is a tough opponent. My pick, I think it's a great matchup right here. I think Dominic might be too crafty, similar to like an Aldo. Too much, his footwork is real, kind of, uh, it's very good footwork, but it's not traditional. So people aren't used to that type of rhythm. He's got a very awkward rhythm, and it's tough to get at him. I, I got him winning by decision. I'm going with Cruz by decision here. I love it. I'm a big Cruz fan, big Cruz fan. I do think Pedro, a warrior, though, just want to mention, he's never been finished in the ring, and he's fighting the best of the best. Super impressive mm -hmm. when you're fighting the competition, and he's never been finished. It just doesn't happen that often for most guys. He's got power. He's got great leg, great leg kicks. He's well rounded. Don't forget, he 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 knocked out Cody Garbrandt round one. No, he's yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. He and he's never been finished. It's crazy the competition he fights. That being said, as you mentioned, Cruz has a weird style with that footwork. He says he worked his footwork to be a figure eight, so guys can't hit him. That was he created his own figure eight to of uh, footwork. That's his secret right there. He's only been finished once in his career, and he complained heavily early stoppage. I agree. I thought it was early stoppage. That was against Cejudo. He was getting up while getting hit. You just can't call a fight when a guy's getting up. I, I don't like it. I think Cejudo has such fast hands. I've mentioned it before. He gets early stoppages frequently. I mean, good for him. I just, I personally don't like it. But at 36, he's considered one of the best bantamweights of all time, and he wants to reclaim that title. 
I think he needs to be more active for him to, him to have a shot at that title. As if another division that's locked up, we got Sterling still out. Jan's kind of got in, he got the interim <laughs> belt now, but now you got Aldo back in the mix. You still got T.J. Dillashaw out for his surgery. It's very claim. Cruz can't sit around the way he thinks he can to so just keep fighting upper guys. Go beat some guys, and they'll throw you right in the mix. It doesn't matter if they're ahead of you or not. That's how the UFC really works. They want you to fight ahead, but they know sometimes guys aren't available. So just go out there and beat guys, and they'll keep moving you up. But I like Cruz to frustrate Pedro in this fight and outpoint him in a decision victory for all the reasons we just mentioned. Now, the card game goes Dominic doesn't have a high demand. He doesn't have that premium on his cards. Just because he was in the earlier days. As you mentioned, a lot of fights in WEC where he was a champ. I think that these fights really help Dominic Cruz if people start to look into into his history and see how good, how dominant he really was. So I think his cards could start to spike. I got to put a hold on him. He's got to win this fight against Munoz because if he loses this one, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a retirement. Because it would take too long for him to climb back up the rankings, dropping further down. That's personal opinion. I don't know if it's true, but I think he wins anyways. But I'm, that's just how I, I feel, at, almost at 37 years old. Now, Pedro simply has never had enough eyes on him, period. He's not really a household name by any means. He just got printed as a rookie in prism. So he's a sell for me. I don't see him getting back up to the top anytime soon. All right, next fight, another just a really fun fight right here. We got mm-hmm. the heavyweights, Augusto Sakai, mm-hmm. ranked 11, minus mm-hmm. 105, 105, underdog. He's 15, 3, and 1. He's 30 years old, another young guy, and he's on a two-fight losing streak. He's going up against Ty Tuivasa. He's the favorite at minus 115. He's 12, and 3. He's only 28 years old, and he's on that three-fight winning streak. And I'll just mention all of them have been knockouts. Tom, mm. I know you. I know we discuss a lot off camera. I know you love Tai Tuivasa. Mm. How do you think he deals with the reach here in the bam bam? Yeah, he's got a little bit of a is not a size disadvantage, a little bit of a height disadvantage here. They got him listed even here on my source, but I mean it, it, that could easily be the case because as we know, these so I always go to the same source. So there's no discrepancy on my end. It's always going to be from the same, but there could be inaccuracies there, and there could always be other listings that put out different heights. We've said this before. Anyhow, I have them listed as the same per my source. Augusto Sakai, the Brazilian, 30 years old, 6'2 in height. Tai Tuivasa, the Australian, 28 years old, 6'2 in height. Augusto Sakai, 2-inch reach advantage. Sakai, 15-3-1 overall, UFC 5-2. and two. He really only loses to, like, very high-end guys, you know, for his losses. He, he had that TKO punches at the very end of the round uh, in June 2021 against Rosenstruck, and that was two, his second loss in a row there. Sakai's put some people away, though, so don't, don't sleep on Sakai. He definitely could put somebody away, and he could put Ty away. Ty, on the other end. 13 and 3 overall, UFC 6 and 3. He's coming off that KO win over Greg Hardy in July 2021, and that's three wins in a row. If you watch that fight, that was super fun because <laughs> that was a crazy Ty fight. Was almost out. Ty was almost out on his feet and then put out Hardy. It was almost like Hardy, I think, thought he almost had him for a quick second, then he got put out. Ty's got boxing, kickboxing background in, in addition to MMA. He wasn't undefeated in either boxing or kickboxing, but he has those skill sets. And he's, you know, he's definitely a mixed martial artist, especially if you're talking about stand up. Important fight here for Sakai, in my opinion. I think his back is up against the wall a little bit here. You know, he's trying to move up the ranks. He becomes, like I said in yesterday with some of these guys, I think they go into Gatekeeperville if, uh, you know, they take too many losses in a row, and I think that would be the case for Sakai. So I think there's going to be a sense of urgency here for Augusto. Momentum is definitely on Ty's side. I'm becoming – he's becoming one of my favorite fighters. This guy is electric. When he comes out, if you're in the crowd and you're not pumped, why are you there? <laughs> this dude is – he is 
fired up, and he's going to be doing shoeies after the fight, win or lose. This dude doesn't give a crap, man. He's coming out to throw down. He's having a good time. Sakai, though, I do want to mention, this guy could put you out. I'm pulling for Bam Bam here, though, and I hope to see a first or second round KO, man. No. So I'm on with Bam Bam here. I'm just – I'm turning into – a big Bam Bam fan, and I would just, I just love the excitement, man. Yeah, uh, but that doesn't, Sakai, if Sakai puts him out, that wouldn't surprise me either, because Hardy almost put him out. Yeah, no. I mean, that's just how he fights. Hardy's a monster dude out there. He really is. I feel like Hardy, can, if he can start to put it together, he's just so big. He's, he's <laughs> lacking a few areas, though, for sure, right now. Well, anyways, this fight looks to be fireworks. I totally agree. Both men finish or get finished, basically. Check the records. Who can land first is kind of how it goes. I got him as a little bit in the height discrepancy. I don't know if that bothers Ty. It doesn't seem to bother him. Hardy was a lot bigger man. Ty, though, he's looked like he's improved over his last few wins. I know he's been in trouble a few times, but he just looks a little bit better, a little bit more posed. The ring rust is not there for him, that nervous jitters. He looks really good out there. Augusto, I think, I agree, he needs to win, or he's going to be on the verge of being cut. You can't lose so many in a row, even though you're you're losing a pretty top guy. Rosenstruck's an absolute savage in there, too. But I think Ty plays no games in here. I think he goes in for the early finish. I think we see fist fly, and I think if you're... And I think Sakai's other loss was to Alistar, who was a beast. Right, yeah, no, they, there's no question he's losing some, some monsters. And there's really not that many bags in the heavyweight division really there's only a couple at the very bottom the heavyweight is is one of the more stacked it's ever been realistically for the ufc but my my pick for this fight i'm going with ty i'm going with early knockout mm. i'm probably going to take a look at i didn't honestly i didn't look at the line i'm probably going to look to play the under in this fight in one and a half rounds i see these guys lighting it up now <laughs> i do yeah augusto printed in 2020 his cards hold little value. So, Ty, 2018. His cards have very little value also. I think both men need a few high-level wins to get the buy rating. Right now, they're both young, and they got time to work on improvements, especially in the heavyweight division. Mm -hmm. I think we reevaluate them again on their next fight. All right. We got another great fight right here. Middleweight. We got the Beverly Hills Ninja, Jordan Wright, plus 280 <laughs> underdog. He's 30 years old. He's 12 and 1 with one no contest. We know that no contest is kind of BS, though. That was uh, Fluffy Hernandez due to weed. So his solo loss, technically, <laughs> is Joaquin Buckley. All right, well, it matters. You get knocked out. It really should be 12 and 2, and you've been knocked out both times. It shows a little something. But he's going up against not totally a newcomer. But Bruno Silva, newer to the UFC, minus 365 favorite. He's 32 years old. He's 21 and 6. He's on a six fight winning streak with all finishes. Tom, I think I think this might have just as much fireworks as Bam Bam and uh Sakai. What do you think? Hey man, it really could, because both these guys are gonna be Going for that knockout for sure. Jordan Wright, the American on one side. Shout out to Chris Farley, RIP, 30 years old, 6'2 in height, three inch reach advantage. He holds over the Brazilian Bruno Silva, six even in height, 32 years old, two years older than Jordan Wright. Now, Jordan Wright, 12 1 0 with one no contest, UFC 2 and 1. Brown Belt and Karate, Brown Ecot. In Penchek Salat, and we've mentioned this before, it's an Indonesian martial art. And I was not familiar with this until researching Jordan Wright previously in the past year. He kind of brought that to my attention. I hadn't experienced anybody that or come across anybody that had this type of uh, training. He's coming off a TKO Punches win over Jamie Pickett in May 2021. On the other side, Bruno Silva, 21-6 and six overall, UFC 2-1. and one. Both these guys don't have a lot of experience in the UFC. They're basically somewhat newcomers. He's coming off a TKO by punches win over Andrew Sanchez in October 2021, only two months ago, and two wins in a row. Andrew Sanchez, as I mentioned, is very game. That's a big win. He got cut from that fight. My pick, Just I, throwing that out there. 
Yeah, that's crazy because he's tough, man. He's going to do well anywhere he goes. I hope he goes over to Bellator. I hope he continues on. I like Andrew Sanchez. I think he's tough, and I enjoyed watching him. Silva by strikes, round one or two. I'm going with Bruno here. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, not arguing that. Bruno has looked incredible so far. I like both the men to finish the fight. That's my play. Bruno undefeated in the UFC. I, I got him undefeated in the UFC. You're saying he had one loss? Um, no, he's undefeated. He's, he's only... Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's he's two and zero, but the other guy's got one uh, yeah. loss. Jordan well, Wright's two and one. I gotta stay in that way. I think he's never been knocked out in his career. Also, that's big. The guy's got a lot of fights. He's never been knocked out. I think Bruto has the better stand up. I think he's the more experienced guy with all his fights. I think Jordan Wright. He doesn't have a win against any of the better names. Like I said, he goes up against Joaquin Buckley, a prospect. Anthony Hernandez, a prospect, and he loses them both. And Bruno Silva, opposite, he's stepping up in competition. He's winning. I think we see Silva just seriously too much power, too much skill set for Jordan Wright in the ring. And Jordan Wright's been semi-impressive in his wins, but it's his losses that you're able to get some reads on him. Now, I don't see any reason for us to really go over a card market for these guys. A little too fresh. Maybe we see Silva get printed in the next set. I think Jordan Wright's going to have to get a few more victories for us to see him, unless they just want to use that nickname, because that's a great nickname. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's move it right on to the women. We haven't talked about too many women yet, just just the Nunes champ here. I, I'm i really liking the, these both these girls. We got a flyweight. We got Miranda Maverick. She's ranked 13. She's a minus 150 favorite. She's 24 years old. She's 9-3, and three, and her last fight was a loss to Macy Barber. And I don't think I'm the only one that was the judges were completely wrong on that fight. I'm not even sure how they gave it to Barber, and I like Barber. But she's going up against Aaron Blanchfield, plus 130 underdog. She's 22 years old. She's 7-1. and one. And her only loss is to Tracy Cortez, a UFC fighter. Mm. So, Tom, how do you like the debut for Aaron Blanchfield here? <laughs> Pretty tough task if you ask me. Yeah, this is tough, and I mean, it's not like Miranda's some big UFC vet either. I mean, this is, they're both super young. They're both under 25, which is crazy. Miranda Maverick, great name, too. Love that last, the kind of that double M, Miranda Maverick. It's a good, it's a good uh, fighting name. American, 24. I got her listed at 11 and 3, UFC 2 and 1. She's 5'2 in height. It's weird because you watch these fighters, you don't realize how tiny they are. You know, she's only 5'2". The other side, you got the American Aaron Blanchfield, 5'3". She's only 22. She might be the youngest female fighter in the UFC. I mean, that I don't know that for a fact, but she's got to be close. 22 is crazy fresh. I mean, that's a bachelor's. Like, if you you had to have basically skipped college. Well, Maverick, know, which, Maverick, you could was easily in, do. Maverick was in school when she was fighting on the Contender Series. Oh, true. You could do that as well. Yeah, yeah well, you could do that as well. I, I, I forgot about that option. You could do that as well. All right, so you got uh, Aaron Blanchfield. Excuse me, Miranda Maverick. I got her 11-3, UFC 2-1. and one. So this is going to be her fourth fight. She's coming off a split decision loss to Macy Barber in July 2021, which we both thought she actually won. But it went down as a loss. She's a brand butt BJJ. The other side, you got Aaron Blanchfield, 7-1, and one, UFC 1-0. One and oh. She's coming off a decision win over Sarah Alpar in September 2021. And she's a black belt in BJJ. Uh, you know, I think both girls are so young. First off, it's just worth mentioning that this the outcome, I don't think, is going to determine whether or not they stay. They have so much room to grow. They're definitely both prospects for the future. I'm going to go with Miranda here, though. I just think that she has a little bit more experience, and I think that she's – I don't have as much experience with Aaron Blanchfield. Okay. I've definitely watched Miranda Maverick's last couple fights, and I'm impressed. Macy Barber is no slouch, and I thought she beat Macy. Yeah. I think it's going to be tough to beat Miranda here. And I think Miranda should be undefeated. It was a tough split decision loss she took right there. I'm going Miranda by decision. I don't think she'll get the finish on Blanchfield, but I think that she can get the decision. Uh, yeah, I love this matchup. Um, 
I just can't believe all these fights on the early prelims. It's crazy. For me, though, this is mm. close, competitive. I can't see Miranda losing here, though. At 24, she has experience in the UFC. She showed she can grapple. She showed she can strike. Um, I know she got robbed in her last fight. It was crazy because even the announcers were going nuts. They already had her winning, and then they're like, what's going on? And they're even like, mm -hmm. Macy's going to rewatch this at home and know she got she got lucky. I think it was true. She definitely lost. Now, Erin has a lot of skills, though. I've, I've watched a lot of her. She's got nice kicks. She's got great jujitsu. Um, I believe she's the only or the first female to win the Eddie Bravo Invitational. Shows how good she is in her jujitsu. She just hasn't been tested in the UFC yet. We know her losses to Tracy Cortez, who is a UFC girl now, and pretty damn good herself. I think Moravik is bigger. I think she's a little bit stronger. And I think she's going to seriously improve now that she has a little more time to train full time. As we mentioned, Maverick was in school the whole time. I believe she was finishing up mm -hmm. like her doctorate. She's just got the high intelligence. She's got great ring IQ. Paging, paging Dr. Maverick. Yeah, I mean, she, she's super <laughs> talented, though. She can do it, it all. You it never know. She could just be like, I'm done with the UFC. I, I've had enough. She's just so talented and so smart. I mean, she's so strong, too, out there. You see her bully some of these girls, and she went up against grapplers. She went up against strikers. She's already got a little bit on each side. I really like it. This is, to me, this is where I sprinkle. I'm taking Maverick. I don't think Blanchfield gets the upset, even though her BJJ is amazing. I think she finishes her. I think Maverick's got some... She wants that first KO in the UFC. Sub or strikes? Oh, you go with yeah, strikes. I'm going with strikes. Ooh, okay. I think she gets her first yeah. one. She's got she's got look at her arms and everything. She's just powerful. She's she's built. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Maverick. Now neither girl's printed yet. I would be very surprised though if we don't see Miranda Maverick printed in Prism. I think with a win here, she's just got more room to grow. I think she's good enough. She's one of the girls that I can see at this stage in the game, and I'm not talking today or even end of this year, but I can see her going up and challenging for the belt. She's got the, <laughs> she does. She's got the intelligence. She's got the skill set, and she has what a lot of people don't have. It's the work ethic. You can see that every mm. time. You know, it's funny. It's it's funny because I wasn't smiling about that. I was just thinking in my head that you know she's Maverick and you're Goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i definitely agree with you though she's that type of these girls are up and coming either one of these two and i agree with you about miranda it, the division isn't that deep she could easily be in striking distance within one to two fights of having herself in place for contention at the belt yeah i i think she, I, I mean, think it's she just can. like that yeah but I, i'm i'm saying that as Valentina ages here, Miranda over the next two or three years could get a title shot, and she could be the kind of girl who maybe gets Ooh. that upset. I'm not saying she will right now. I, I, I definitely, obviously, Valentina's in a league of her own. I'm saying in a few more years, as Valentina ages, and this girl's getting better. It's just, mm. I'm calling that right now. We can go back and watch this video in, in three, four years. But I don't <laughs> want her fighting her now because I, I don't even see it as a competition. Talking three, four right. years or whatever it is, she climbs up nice and then gets the shot. Let's 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 beat Aaron Blanchfield first. She's gonna beat Blanchfield, I'm telling you right now. But mm -hmm. let's get right into the next fight. We got this is insane. Flyway fight, the number four guy in the prelims. This is crazy. Early prelims. Alex Perez, ranked four, minus three thirty five favorite. He's twenty nine years old. He's twenty four and six. And his last fight was a loss in the championship to figure a hit -o. Just crazy. This guy's on the early mm. prelims. Mm. He's going up against Matt Schnell, who's ranked number nine, plus 260 underdog. He's 15 and six, and he's 31 years old. And I just want to mention, before we even get into this fight, Perez, I, I'm not saying he wouldn't have lost anyways, because Figueredo's a savage. But Figueredo got away with one of the ultimate fence grabs as Perez was taking him down. The ref didn't see it. Changed the entire fight, and he got choked out. I don't know if it would have happened like that. If that fence grab, go ahead and watch that fight. That was one of the worst fence grabs I've ever mm. seen. I think he was even warned the first time they didn't catch him the second. He held on as he was falling down. 
So, all right, but let's get right into it, Tom. Perez Schnell, what do you got here? Number four guy. Yeah, man, I, this, you're right. Two top teners in the early prelims. Top ten. Right. And it's not even the headlines on the prelims. It's below the Maverick fight. Mm, it's crazy. And that fight's below the Eric Anders fight. So, I mean, you know, this is like, I, it could be the fourth card on the, the fourth fight in the entire night, you know, which is really a, a tribute to the fans in a way. I mean, I don't really think it was meant to be that way necessarily, but it just shows how deep the card is. I mean, dang, you snuck these guys in two top tenors um, way deep. Anyhow, Alex Perez, the American, 29 on one side, 5'5 five, five in height. Matt Schnell, the American on the other side, 31. Five seven in height, Schnell holds a four point five inch reach advantage. Alex Perez twenty four and six overall UFC six and two. He's coming off a sub loss to Figgy as you mentioned in November twenty twenty, basically thirteen months ago. We have we Alex has been gone for over a year now. Matt Schnell on the other side fifteen and six overall UFC is five and four. Black belt and karate. Purple Belt and BJJ is coming off unanimous decision loss to Rogerio Bontarin in May 2021. You know, what has Perez done with the 13 months? That's a big question. Has he utilized it properly to really up his game? Or has he potentially going to have trouble on the scale this week? You know, we'll see. You know, what happens here? We've noticed people, some of these guys that take off too much time, it's great. And I, and then in that case, it's not too much. But the other people, though, they do take off what would be too much because it's actually hindered their career. We'll see what happens with Perez here. I got to tell you, though, when I watched Matt Schnell fight uh, Rogerio, it just seemed like Schnell could not get his hands going. He just couldn't get anything going. I think that's a big question. Could Schnell just let loose, man? Just start throwing. You know, don't chill and wait and pull some Tyrone Woodley type stuff, you know, where you're waiting too long and, that you know, kind of the the new version of Woodley to where, you know, you got like you're talking about that deer in headlights type yeah, thing horrible. where you're just not throwing down. Horrible. For that reason, really, you know, I got to – that question mark's too big for me and I think that's a bigger question mark than what Perez did in the last 13 months. I'm going to go with Perez by strikes, round three. By strikes, round three. All right, yeah. I, yeah. I think this fight is close, man. Schnell fights long. He fights rangy. He probably has better stand-up skills than Alex Perez. But Perez is the wrestler here. We know that's his go-to. He's got great wrestling skills. Good takedowns. He doesn't normally have a problem taking anyone down unless they're holding the cage. Then obviously you have a problem. I like Perez to get the nod here. I think this is close. I think it's close to even on the feet, and I think it goes to Perez getting some top time and changing the judges' minds on that one. I like him to circle back. I like his experience. I think he gets that title shot again pretty soon now that Figueredo's not the title holder. Maybe he will be when he fights Moreno again. We don't know. I think Figueredo's just that weight cut's too much for him. He says no, but he cuts from like 165 to 125. Literally cuts like a quarter of his weight every time. Crazy cut. I think that's his problem. He really needs to go up to bantam weight. But neither here nor there. I like Perez. I think he gets the nod here. I've, I've been high on Perez since day one. His wrestling skills for this size are unbelievable. I'm not completely sold yet on either guy, though, in the card game. I think I need to see this win here. To change my not my mind, but let me tell you, Schnell is already a fan favorite. He was just printed. People love him. They buy him right up. I pay attention to all that <laughs> stuff they do. It's crazy. Yeah, but they, certain guys, they just automatically click to and yeah. they get snatched right up. Now, Perez, he's a favorite of mine, but he just hasn't been active lately. And he used to be very active. I'm not sure what happened there. If he just needed the time off, needed family time. I, I got to do a little more digging if he had a kid or something like that. I don't know. But Perez, I'm going to put a hold on him because he could be a buy very soon. Guys, we're done with the prelims. That was all we could cover. There's only one or two we, we left off. I also just want to mention, though, UFC's got to get the Adam weight for the females out there. 
My girl Stan mm. Fairfax gets another win. She takes home. Ooh. Yeah, she's won Ooh. FC. She takes home. She's going to challenge Angela Lee. She won the Grand Prix. She's just unbelievable. She could be a three sport. You've been talking Lee for a minute, too. Yeah, well, she could. I think Stamp is the real deal. She submitted the submission specialist. And this girl's coming mm. over from kickboxing and we tie champ. So she's already two sport champ. And then she converts and she gets the sub on the girl. Just a very impressive girl. She's got such a chin on her. She's tiny though. She can never move up to to a bigger size, a straw weight in the UFC. She'll just be so undersized. She's a small girl. We need that atom weight over here in the UFC. There's so many good girls. I don't know why they don't have it. But whatever. Stan Fairfax and Yo, I win. want to give a quick for all the soccer heads out there. I know you collect soccer heart cards too, yo. Lionel Messi yesterday passed the legendary, my childhood favorite, Pele, uh, in all-time goals. So that was a huge uh, accomplishment for Messi, so props to him. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining the channel. Um, don't forget, you got to like, subscribe, and leave a comment mm. if you're still watching now. And you can get the Poirier card shipped worldwide. Good luck, y'all.